Uh, investor uh, John Rogers joined uh, Squawk Box earlier this week and raised some eyebrows with his comments on impeachment. I think the other thing we need to be working on is thinking about what does it mean we have a President Pence and how will he handle that? We've been doing a lot of research on that and if, you, know, you think that over the next six months or so we could have that kind of a leader. Okay, wow. A different... And a lot of people uh, after the most recent election, President Trump's election, probably were not very bullish on the markets. For example, uh, John Rogers' fund has trailed the S&P this year by about 800 basis points, and part of that might be because of the occupant of the White House. Joining us now to talk how politics can affect market calls, Elizabeth Kempf, assistant professor of finance at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. She co-authored the study, Partisan Professionals Evidence. In this case, it's from credit rating analysts. So, uh, the, the study, and you, you did a, an actual study where you tried to factor out other variables, uh, and, and it found that these professionals can make it harder for companies to raise money if the president or the occupant, the current occupant of the White House, is a different party from what they are personally. It, I don't know, it puts them in a bad mood or something, and doesn't, uh, doesn't give, it, it actually skews their ratings lower. Is that... Basically, what the abstract uh, that I read summarized, Elizabeth? Yes, yeah, so, so in this study, which uh, is joined with my co author, Margarita Tutsura at Cornell, we show that political views of analysts affect credit ratings, and specifically, uh, alignment with a president seems to be important. So, when they are uh, supporting the president's party, they tend to be more optimistic. They are more, up, uh, more likely to upgrade and less likely to downgrade firms. Uh, uh, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, the, 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 year that, <laughs> the year that you used with two, was 2016, I think, for, for the lion's share of this. And you point out it's, it's a more divisive time that, than in the past. But did it happen in 2008? I mean, the, the, the Trump derangement syndrome, for lack of a better term, of 2016 is historically like nothing any of us have ever seen. Are, are you sure that isn't an outlier, that it's Trump? Because you saw the, the forecast for what, the, what uh, uh, the stock market and the economy and the bond market, you saw a lot of the forecasts from mainstream uh, financial analysts when, when Trump was elected and, and kind of the opposite happened. Yeah, so our, our study was much broader in the sense that we studied data over 18 years. In total, we looked at more than 500 analysts. So we did not just uh, study the Trump election, but we did find that the disagreement between Democratic and Republican uh, analysts was particularly pronounced during that period. And we also find that it tends to be particularly high when uh, the environment is very politically polarized. Okay, I'm looking at it there. So I'm trying to figure out quickly the, the Bush one and, and Bush two. So Bush two, Republican uh, analysts were more positive? Is that, or because I'm looking more at more the, positive. They were more positive during W's uh, term than, than the Democrat analysts. But the biggest that's move, right. I mean, that's just a, a measure right there on the right that, what is that, blue? Democratic analysts during Trump, that's just, that's just a measure of yeah. Trump derangement syndrome right there. I mean, Moody's Analytics uh, had, a, um, had a report on the, what was going to happen to the bond market. If, with, I mean, I, I have never seen a more dire forecast for what was supposed to happen um, that they came out with. And, and it obviously did not, none of it came to pass. It couldn't have been more wrong, probably. Did you look at that one? Uh, no, not, not that one in, uh, specifically, but certainly the data that we've been looking at tells us that there is something special around the Trump election because there was, that was the time where our disagreement, we saw a, li a large spike just looking month by month around the election. Um, but, you know, it was not the only time where people disagreed. So it, it's, uh, you know, particularly pronounced now, but the problem was also there uh, before. Right. You did it with... So this is upgrade downgrades for, for, for basically for corporate debt for, with, yeah. by the ratings agencies. Can you extend yeah. this study to, to uh, equity co commentary from, from the, the major firms uh, in terms of the stock market? Or, or do you think that, have you thought about doing that study? Is it possible? Could, could you do a controlled experiment there? 
we would we would love to uh, actually, and I think it uh, it's definitely on our research agenda to try to understand how broad is this phenomenon and whether other you know groups of uh, professionals in finance are yeah. also affected by their political views. Uh, we thought that credit rating analysts are actually a very useful uh, starting point because. You know, they're very geographically uh, um, concentrated, and so that made it easy to match it to party affiliation yeah. information. But also, I think because we know from prior literature that ratings are important uh, determinant of firms' cost of debt, um, that suggests that, you know, if we do find evidence of partisan bias there, it actually likely has consequences for the rated firms. Yeah.